Hey everybody, this is Guy with Survive and good morning. Uh, this morning we're doing some surface grinding of some GSO-12s and part of that is getting the parts flat so that we have a flat starting surface for surface grinding. Uh, if you don't get this out, you're going to end up with a warped part even after you grind both sides. So uh, what we do is hammer flatten it so that we're not putting any additional heat in the parts after heat treat. Uh, there's no sense paying for a really good heat treat only to put a bunch of other heat stress in them after the fact. So we're going to go through and hammer flatten this to bring this down so that we have a good workable surface. Uh, these were surface ground by like several parties out, third party. Um, we were working with an outside vendor who was working with an outside vendor who initially surface ground these down just a little bit oversized. So I'm not sure what happened here, but uh, we're going to get these fixed up and make them beautiful. So we have a batch of parts flattened here. So we put the Blanchard stencil here, laid everything out, and we're gonna grind side one here, and we'll check back in a minute. So you can see here as we're coming down on these parts where it's coming down in a very uneven manner. So I know even though these were Blanchard ground and should have been pretty flat and parallel, that is not the case. So we obviously had some high grinding pressure or something where we created a, an uneven uh, surface condition. So these aren't a uniform thickness starting out, even having been uh, Blanchard ground by a subcontractor previously. So just checking in here at the end of a down feed, you can see with all the swarf on here that these parts are grinding very, very efficiently now. So now we're done with side one here on these parts. And I'm just gonna take a close look in here so you can see this a bit better. I left coolant here on the table because it helps the grind lines show up a bit easier in the video. But you can see we have a very uniform surface now. The crosshatch pattern is very even the whole length of the part. So that is a really, really flat side here for side one. So when we flip this over and bring down side two, uh, the part is going to have an excellent level of flatness and parallelism between the two sides. So we'll check back in after we do that. Checking back in here real quick, uh, we just got the Blanchard stencil off. Everything is demagnetized, but even on that rollered surface, since we had gotten everything hammer flattened for side one grinding, we have enough surface tension that none of these parts want to move off of here. So they're really stuck to the table. Uh, so I know that I did a good job flattening these parts out. So when we flip these over, this is gonna be a, a very, very good working surface off the table to grind what's gonna be the show side. Uh, that's another reason that I, I always grind the back side first, because while it's flat, we're still gonna get just a hair of a better finish. Uh, it shouldn't matter now with our new really fine finishing wheel, but you always get a little bit better finish after that flip. And uh, I like that to be the, the show side traditionally. But thankfully, we've uh, engineered past that so that both sides have a really, really beautiful surface finish. So we're going to get these off of here, blown off, wipe the table down, and get side two loaded up. So I just really quickly wanted to show you guys the finish on this blade. This is exactly all of you guys with these big GSO 12s, 10s, and 8s. This is what we've been working toward. And we're finally there in our development. So I just wanted to come in here really close and show you. That is a gorgeous Blanchard finish. So after we dust this off about five tenths on each side, uh, we'll get that grain pattern much, much smaller. So all that will erase in surface grinding. Uh, something else I wanted to point out here, it's kind of funny to think about. I say these are more time consuming and it, it really is true in every regard. Uh, so I'm taking these off. We only get six per table here, and I can usually scoop up the whole table load, blow them off, and they're pretty well done. These are so big that I can only take one off at a time, and they're really tight on here. And I've got to blow these off and kind of wipe them off all at, at you know one at a time here. Get them stacked, wipe the table down, and then make sure all this debris is off this large surface. Because if there's any little lint, dust, anything like that of any significance. Um, it will affect how this, this face mounts to this face. So obviously we want all of our surfaces to be flat and parallel to one another so that our grinds come out good. 
we have a good even edge tolerance and you don't want any you know debris or anything on the table or on the parts uh, mucking that up so uh yeah these are a lot more time consuming in every regard sorry for blinding you there Ellie. uh so now we're going to do side two here and show you the finished result here in a second uh really quickly as an aside this is why i have trust issues and where now we're bringing all this in-house uh, I don't blame my old service uh, provider. Uh, Travis did a really good job within his own shop, but then he reached out to a subcontractor for grinding. And I know all of the steel was relatively the same thickness because it was from the same heat when these parts were cut out. But So these went to a, a Blanchard shop somewhere. We already showed you that the parts really aren't flat or parallel, uh, which I think indicates some tramming issues or rushing through it but also the thicknesses are all over the place. I've got some parts over here as high as 290. Uh, I'm working on a few parts that are still here at 284. And then we have some extremes that come down here. Uh, I'm working thin up. So I've got some parts here at 273 for some reason, and then a few down in the 260s already. So I have almost no margin of error to clean these up. And uh, that's, that's a little tedious because I mean, any more to get this steel is very, very expensive. Uh, it was already expensive, and now it's nauseating me. So, uh, to get that performance and stuff that you guys want out of these tools. So, bringing all of this in house moving forward, you can see some of the struggles we were having and why we were kind of scared of these and a little hesitant to just jump in. Uh, we're trying to get this grinding process developed so we know it's going to work and give you guys the finishes you're looking for, but then also be able to get a you know, a meaningful amount of these out each day and each week without putting 18 hours a day in your stand in front of the ground. So uh, check back in a minute and we'll see what our finished parts are looking like. So we've got the parts and the table all wiped off here and everything is magnetized and ready to go. So let's get to it. We're starting to touch off on side two here and you can see all those little highs and lows. So that's telling me that one, the grinding outfit that initially did these definitely was using too much pressure and their table was not properly trammed in. So we didn't have parallel surfaces from side one to side two. So there we are, one last little check before we get these off the table. We are at 260 and eight and a half tenths, so that gives me plenty of room to clean up both sides of that really fine wheel. These look magnificent. So we're all grounded both sides here and other than a few fingerprints, this is a clean part. So we're just gonna go ahead and check this now that we're all done. Do a flatness check. And unsurprisingly, we have a nice flat part. So that's gonna result in a better sheet fitment because our tip's not gonna wanna go to one side or the other. And we're gonna have much more uniform grinding from side to side and a really uniform edge thickness the whole length of this blade. So there you have it. That's how we grind a GSO 12. I hope you found this video informative. I'm going to get back to work now, but check back soon for uh, probably some more content. Have a great day.